Seventh circle. Here reside the violet, who are separated into three rings. A minotaur, half human, half bull, infernal beast, is the guardian for the sinners of the seventh circle. When Dante and Virgil enter the outer ring of the seventh circle, they come upon a river of blood, boiling blood. And they are met there by a centaur named Chiron. Now, Chiron's first comment is that he notices that Dante, when he walks, he leaves footprints and rocks move about. So he says to Virgil that that man must be of the living because he actually can move things here in this place. At which point Virgil explains to him Dante's story and why he is in fact there. And the centaur then guides them to another centaur named Nessus. And Nessus is to bring them across the river at the shallowest point. Now in this boiling river of blood are souls who committed murder in their time or shed the blood of another. And as they get closer to the shallow part of the river, Dante looks around and notices that there are thousands of centaurs, thousands of them that are basically guarding the river. And in the boiling river, where there are different depths of the blood, are murderers who basically, if you committed the worst crime that you committed, you're in the deeper part of the river. And if they try to get out, the centaurs shoot them back with bows and arrows. So there's no guiding out. They are fated to spend eternity in this boiling river of blood. And also, as they're crossing the river, Dante notices that some of his, uh, let's say, enemies, his political enemies in the Gabaline party back in Florence, are mired in the deeper part of the boiling blood. Seventh circle, the middle ring. Here reside the violence against themselves, the suicides. This is the circle of the violence against oneself, which is suicide. The suicides become trees. And Dante regards the suicides with compassion. Seventh circle, the inner ring. Here reside the violent against God, or blasphemers, the violent against nature, or perverts, and the violent against art. In the third ring of circle seven, there are the three offenders, those who basically say that God does not exist, the, the spirit does not exist. The surrounding scene is these dust balls of fire are falling on these souls. And he sees this tortured soul, a defiant soul, I gotta say, uh, Campaneus, who was killed by the thunderbolts of Zeus for being blasphemous in this particular scene. And uh, I find that to be questionable inside of me what blasphemous means. In this particular scene, he was blasphemous towards Zeus because he felt, in my opinion, that he was as good as Zeus or even better powerful on earth, powerful in hell, as he tells Dante. He says, I am now as I was alive, and I am now as I am dead. Dante and Virgil climb onto Gerion's back. Then to Dante's terror and amazement, Gerion suddenly takes off into the air flying slowly downward to the eighth circle of hell below. Eighth circle, the fraudulent. This circle is divided into ten chasms of stone. Eighth circle, chasm one. Here reside the panderers and seducers. In the first future, you have all those sinners that walk in different directions. We have the seducers going one way, and you have the panders which walk the other way. And all of those are basically struck with large whips by demons with huge horns. Dante, when he is in the first chasm, he recognizes one of the scorched spirits. And even though the spirit is not wanting to tell a story, he's compelled to because he remembers the former world. So he tells Dante why he is in hell. And the reason why he is in hell is because he basically pimped out his sister to the Marquise. Basically, he sold her to have sex with the Marquise. 
and later on he meets another spirit which is a former prince, his name is Jason. And Jason is in hell just because he stole the golden fleet. Eighth circle, chasm three. Here reside the Simonists, those who bought or sold ecclesiastical pardons or offices. Dante in this passage, interestingly, actually names the current pope and another pope and pictures the popes uh, or, or describes the popes that he sees in this position as being suspended by their feet upside down as if it's uh, an inverted baptism in fire, literally a baptism of fire. Of course, the baptism of fire is one of three baptisms spoken of in the Gospels that Jesus spoke of, the baptism of water, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the baptism of fire. The message that Dante was giving that money shouldn't be used in this way probably could have avoided the Reformation because by the time of the Reformation people were buying what was known as indulgences and it was this that was used to raise money to build the huge cathedrals and monuments throughout Rome that later became a very important part of what Rome was all about. The money for those incredible buildings and artwork was raised through the selling of indulgences to wealthy people. I think in all likelihood, I would speculate Dante had a near-death experience in which he literally saw hell. And it was that which so powerfully motivated him, much like the Apostle Paul was powerfully motivated, apparently, by a near-death experience, one of the many times that he was beaten to the point of almost death. Perhaps he actually crossed over, and it was out of that experience that he was able to describe the third heaven and the various layers of heaven, which he described in the Bible. So um, I would speculate that Dante had a near-death experience and that that's what animated him to write so powerfully in ways that captured the imagination of many, many artistic people, writers, artists, musicians, songwriters throughout history to follow in his footsteps with this great epic poem of hell and, and judgment and damnation. Eighth Circle, Chasm Five. Here reside the Barator, or corrupt politicians. It's a very dark pit filled with boiling tar. Restammo per vedere un'altra fessura di male bolge e gli altri pianti vani, e vidi la mirabilmente oscura. Io vedea lei, ma non vedea in essa mai che le bolle e il bollor levava e gonfiar tutta e riseder compressa. Lo duca mio dicendo, guarda, guarda, mi trasse a sé dal loco dove io stava e vidi dietro a noi un diavol nero correndo su per lo scoglio venire. Quel s'attuffò e tornò su convolto, ma i demon che del ponte avean coperchio gridar, qui non ha loco il santo volto. Qui si nuota altrimenti che nel serchio, però se tu non vuoi dei nostri graffi, non far sopra la pegola soverchio. Lo buon maestro. A ciò che non si paia che tu ci sia, mi disse, già da quatta dopo uno scheggio che alcun schermo taglia, e per nulla offensione che mi sia fatta non temer tu, ch'io le cose conte, perché altra volta fui a tal baratto. Non vo che tu paventi, lasciali di grignar pure al loro senno, che fanno ciò per l'essi dolè. A circle, chasm six. Here reside the hypocrites. For their punishment, they are forced to wear coats that are beautiful on the outside, but lined inside with heavy lead, forcing them to bend over and struggle to move. This punishment fits the scene since they glitter on the outside but are so weighted down that there is no chance of spiritual progress. Dante is again recognized as being alive, this time because his throat moves as he talks. Dante has placed the hypocrites far down in circles of hell. 
their presence is a restatement of Dante's definition of sin as perversion of the intellect, and the cloaks of the hypocrites which dazzle the eye actually are instruments of torture. Few sins can equal the deliberate cloaks of one's true character and feelings with false aspects as piety, tolerance, or honesty. Among these sinners, we can find Caiaphas and his uncle Annas crucified on the ground. If you are asking why they have this punishment and why they are with the hypocrites, it's because they were the masterminded of the crucifixion of Christ. Eighth circle, chasm seven. Here reside the thieves who are pursued and bitten by snakes. After the poets reach the end of the bridge, they can see the masses of serpents and sinners in the seventh chasm where the thieves reside. The sinners have their hands tied behind them with a serpent whose head and tail are threaded through the spirit's body at the loins and tied in coils and knots that their hands were bound behind their backs. And now their hands were bound with the serpents. They were coiled around their fists and then threaded through their body and tied around their loins. And as they passed, Dante saw a serpent bite one of the spirits. And as quickly as the serpent bit, the spirit then turned to ashes. And as quickly as the serpent turned to ashes, it then rose back up into its spirit form. And the spirit looked terrified because it didn't have any idea what happened. And then it looked around, realizing his reality. And this was his punishment for the rest of eternity, to be turned into ashes and then reborn again. Bonnie then confessed that he was embarrassed that Dante saw him here. But what he had done is that he had stolen from a chapel and someone else had gotten arrested for his crime. He then went on to tell Dante that there would be a great war of sorts in Pistoria and that all of Dante's party, the Whites, would be destroyed and taken over. And he said this to Dante with such a purpose because he wanted Dante to feel grief. And then as they were leaving Vani, he made a completely obscene gesture to God. And he was then engulfed by serpents. And as that happened, Cacus the centaur rode by looking for the blasphemer. Virgil then explained to Dante that Cacus did not reside among the thieves. Dante and Virgil were approached by three sinners who were looking for a thief. As they stood there, Dante noticed a lizard bite one of the sinners in their belly button. And then what happened, the scene that happened before his eyes was too much for Dante to take. The spirit then took the form of the lizard, and the lizard then took the form of the human. And Dante realized that their punishment, just as they had stolen possessions in their human life, their afterlife, they were bound to steal each other's forms over and over again, going through this terrifying transformation. And as they left the seventh chasm, Dante was without words because all he could remember was the terrifying image of the transformations of the spirits.